listening to the Mouthcast from Lincoln for the first time, would you believe? And my guests on this edition are Jay Wilgate Esquire and Rigglesworth from Public Service Broadcasting. Hello. Hello. 18 januari 
So, you know, we were well within our rights. So back off. <laughs> wow. I've never seen that side of you. Stern words. Uh, and uh, a DVD has come out as well, DVD edition of the album, which interestingly featured uh, your commentaries on mm. on the track. Well, inter- interesting is a, <laughs> that is an interesting word. Which has, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I, I just thought, you know, we were trying to think of... Uh, we, we took a bit of time to make a DVD because we wanted to make it more than just a kind of like, oh, let's just whack it out and, you know, sell a few of them. You know, we wanted to try and make it something that's actually worth owning. And I thought I thought it'd be an interesting thing to do, just sit down and talk about some of the thoughts that went into choosing the films and the way that the songs were written. And, you know, I, hopefully hopefully some people did find it interesting, but um, I'm sure Riggles probably isn't one of them. But <laughs> I found I, it very I, amusing. I, I haven't actually it listened to it. If it's I, anything like the uh, Noel Gallagher's... Commentary <laughs> over his music video. It's definitely not as good as that. They might give it a listen. Certainly not as good as that. What the? Is it? That's hilarious. Oh, this song's terrible. <laughs> well, the fact that the entire album's on there and it's a really visual live show that you've got, mm. it's not just coming along to listen to a band, is it? It's like a whole experience of. Uh, it's like sensory overload. Mm. And obviously, the venues have scaled up since a year ago, so how has the show changed? Well, we, we've got the benefit of being able to kind of scale the show to, to suit the venue, really. So for the November tour that we were on, we had an all-new set. We had two giant TVs and, like, a host of, of smaller TVs. We had a whole load of, like, live projection mapping going on and live filming and, and all kinds of stuff like that. And, um, yeah, it was, a, it, was, it was quite a spectacle, I think. Um, sadly, we don't always have the budget to do that for the shows that we're playing. So for this little run of dates, it's kind of a bit more back to basics and it's just us two and, and the screen behind us. But it still does have a, a bit of that sort of hypnotic quality to it, I think. I think it's purely just listening to music while visuals are playing. I think people just get sucked into it a bit. Mm. And this uh, run of support dates, you've got a run coming up with Manic Street Preachers, who you've supported at the end of last year, was that? Yep. Uh, and last summer, interestingly, you supported not only New Order, but the Rolling Stones, which <laughs> seemed the strangest thing. It, that, that was Hyde Park, which yeah. is a massive place. So in ter- just in terms of the show, how was that? <laughs> It was good. It was inside a Spiegel tent. It wasn't on the same stage as them. But yeah, we're on... I, I wouldn't cast it as support. Well, like the Rolling we, Stones. We, we were on the same poster. But that's like, it's like, it was like a, a festival day. That's like saying every festival we've done, we could say we've supported. No, because it was their it was everything. their day, and they had to approve. This is the bit that I found out later. They have to approve all the support acts. So they some, don't care. No, somebody to do with them <laughs> has listened to us and gone, yeah, they'll do. <laughs> yeah, go on then, shove yeah. them in that tent. <laughs> yeah, stick them in that tent where it's 40 degrees. Where it's really hot, yeah. <laughs> if we can finish them off. It was yeah. the Charlie Watts tent, that was all yeah. his choices. <laughs> yeah. it, was, it was like doing Bikram yoga, it was, it was ridiculous in there. But it was, it was good fun, it was, it was the hottest day of the year, but it was, it was great. And uh, we, we went along there thinking we're, we're minnows, we're nobodies, you know, we're going to get sort of like given a, a deck chair in, underneath a tree somewhere and that's going to be our dressing room. But we got looked after like... We've never been looked after before mm. or since, really. And I think we might have taken advantage of that situation. Well, it's like a free champagne bar, yeah. and then the food <laughs> the bar, was amazing. The bar ran out of champagne. I mean, let's be honest, it's not, it's not a situation that's going to arise very often, so we, we kind of took advantage of it. <laughs> we had another gig the next day, though, so I wasn't feeling too smart. But, mm. um, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I did wonder that last time, actually, because the show is so technically involved how you might enjoy or have to kind of stop yourself enjoying life on the road. No, no, we're, we're drunkards. <laughs> <laughs> Committed. <laughs> no, um, I, you can kind of... It's, it's a really funny one because actually, for me, between the zone of about zero and three pints, I seem to make more mistakes on zero than I do on three. It's kind of like playing pool you kind of hit the purple patch and you know when everything's you know you're just a little bit more f- sort of like free and easy your muscles are a bit more relaxed I yeah, suppose yeah it just gets rid of a bit of nerves I suppose yeah so it, it does help to a certain extent I mean I definitely couldn't get absolutely you know off my trolley I couldn't do a sort of Pete Doherty and turn up and be rolling around on the floor that would that'd be a very short show so. that would be really funny though would, I would like to for see you it would be funny if anybody's yes. actually paid any money to come and see us I think yes. they might not we'd have to offer a full refund <laughs> <laughs> might but it might be worth it <laughs> 
I'll do it tonight. Think of the press. <laughs> I, all, I once a gig, I always nearly fall over. So one day, I probably will just stack it totally. Yeah, I'm amazed it hasn't happened yet. I, my shoes are in a terrible state at the moment. I need to get them repaired. It's basically an enormous hole in my right shoe, and I forgot about it yesterday. Did you get them repaired? I trod on it. And, uh, it's quite old fashioned, that is. Well, you know, make do, man. Sound like my dad. Hmm. There's a reason for that. <laughs> well, we'll round up really by talking. <laughs> Someday, I'm going to build a plane that will be just like a bird. You've got a string of dates at the RAF Museum, which seems entirely fitting, of course, because of the single Spitfire, so you must be mm. pretty excited about those, I would think. Uh, very, very, yeah. should be really good fun, fun run of dates, that. When you have a kind of a show in a special venue like that, do you sort of tailor it or well for that we're gonna we're basically gonna play the the whole of the war room which is which is something of a rarity anyway because we normally play sort of two or three tracks from it at most i think um so i think we're gonna start with that and just you know it's gonna be a kind of mini don't look back in anger style uh band plays classic ep <laughs> that's all in very inverted commas by the way <laughs> band plays mildly interesting ep that yeah, got boring after a couple of listens. <laughs> In full, yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna do that, and obviously the organisers themselves have gone to a great deal of trouble there to uh, arrange a whole sort of theme series of themed events around it, and uh, and lots of interesting stuff going on. So it should be it should be kind of like a cross between a gig and a sort of secret cinema type thing. I don't mm-hmm. know if you know those, but yeah, it should be kind of an experience. And yeah, we're very pleased that they all sold out. So looking forward to them. And then you've got these dates supporting the Manic Street Preachers, which must be quite interesting because I would imagine they're a band who, as you said, of the Stones, who uh, look after the acts that they take on the road. They're really, really friendly guys, really just chat out to us, just like normal people. And uh, <laughs> as somebody who's a bit of a Manix worshipper in my teenage years, uh, and continue to be, certainly, you know, I was obsessed with the Holy Bible when I was about 16, 17. And, uh, yeah, if you, could, if you could have told me then what would happen now, I think I would have... Yeah, I don't know what would have done. Probably spontaneously combusted, I think. But they're they're lo- lovely guys. And and I think the fact that they've asked for us and they ask all their support acts, it seems, you know, they ask people who they like. I think that speaks volumes about them and the fact that they do actually care about music and, you know, don't just let their label or their management foist some band who they don't particularly care about on them. I think that's great. And the fact they've asked you back as well, months mm. on from the first it's yeah. one of the is... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's a, it's an easy act to follow as well. I mean, there is that part to it. So. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then a run of festivals in the summer. Yeah, we, we've got a good run of uh, a good run of festival dates. We've got Glastonbury again and uh, best of all, Camp Festival, which we didn't do last year, and we were you know really hoping to do, and a whole load of others like Llama Tree, Beautiful Days, Shambler, Farm Festival, loads. It's, it's, it's basically it's, it's the time of the year when all the kind of hard work and all the all the other stuff just like goes out the window and it's just like it's just fun yeah it's really good fun and uh, finally of course the million dollar question new material do you yeah. have a million dollars <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the million dollar question <laughs> yeah that's a very large briefcase you're carrying on <laughs> <laughs> you do appear to be handcuffed to it but, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah I've, I've been working on demos and uh, been playing them in the van to mixed receptions but uh we're getting there, and I think we're going to be recording some. We're going to be doing some sort of drum tracking and other stuff in late July, early August. It looks like, and working towards finishing something by the end of the year and, and having out early next year. And it was originally supposed to be an EP, but I think there's no shying away from the fact that it's it's basically an album. So it is the second album. I was kind of hoping to. It's just you, it's you rambling on again, in, but in musical style this time. Yeah, it's it's you musical reinterpretations of the commentaries to the first album. <laughs> so I've sampled my own voice yeah. and Lovely. Yeah, written new music to it. Mm-hmm. It's, it's basically I can't wait. it's postmodern postmodernism. <laughs> R- great. Yeah. yeah. Cool. It's the future, plus the past. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thanks very much again. <laughs> <That's Really>? uh... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Brilliant.
Restaurant van ruim 200 kilometer.